Hello everyone, welcome to another Coding Fundamentals and GML tutorial. My name is Sam Spade and in this tutorial we'll be talking about DS grids. As always, a grid is a data structure and a data structure is a collection of values, the relationship among those values, and how you interact with them. And you should watch the introduction for more general information on how data structures work in GameMaker Studio 2. Grids, as you might expect, store information in a grid or a table. They're essentially a 2D array, but with a lot more functionality. On the x-axis, we have the columns, and on the y-axis, we have the rows. So here's our data, and this data's position is 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, and this would be 4, 1, because our column is 4. Grids, like lists, and most data structures are 0 indexed, meaning they start at 0. So 4 is actually the fifth column, and its row is 1. And as you might guess, with grids then, whenever you want to access data, you have to give it two numbers, the column and the row, where the column is the first number and the row is the second number. So grids are great, obviously, when you want to store things in a grid or a table type structure, but the added functionality is what's most helpful. Primarily, they can sort rows, uh, but not columns. They can add and clear values, but most importantly, they can set regions, add to regions or areas, sum or get the mean or average of those areas, and so on. In fact, grids have the most functions of any data structure. Just to pull up the manual quickly, you can see all of these functions right here. And I think it's worth reading through them if you're going to use grids and see what you can do with a grid. So a grid is particularly great if you want to be able to sort or shuffle rows, or you want to handle information in a region or a space. Unfortunately, grids are not as good at saving and loading as lists and maps are because they're not part of the JSON structure in GameMaker Studio 2. You can still save and load them though, it's just a little bit of extra work. Personally, and this is a personal opinion, I would avoid using grids unless you really want the functionality that you get with interacting with regions. Otherwise, I always use lists of lists. I find that those are much easier to work with, um, mostly because you can work with them in the JSON structure, which helps a lot with data management and saving and loading. But that's a personal opinion. Lots of people use grids for lots of things. And now let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see a couple examples. Before we run the debugger, I want to go over the object uh, because it's got a couple more events than I normally use. So first we have our create event. This is where most of the code will be. We'll go over this in the debugger. I'll set a breakpoint here. We have our draw event, and this will just draw the grid to the screen, which will be important for visualizing a couple other things. Because we have more code, I can't destroy my grid in the create event. So I'm gonna have the cleanup event to destroy my grid. And then we have a global left press. This will add values in a disk. And you'll see a visual example of that. That's why we're drawing it to the screen. And a right click, which will shuffle the grid. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's actually run this code. So we're creating our grid. Note that the grid create function is the one function that actually takes arguments. You've got to give it the width and the height. So we're gonna look at our grid as a grid. And note that this grid is not empty. Because we create it with a width and a height, it automatically populates it. We have the columns and then the rows. So this right here would be the top row. Now we're gonna resize the grid. You can see it just shrunk on both levels. And by the way, there's no reason you have to keep the grid as a square. You could do this differently. I'm simply keeping it as a square because when I draw it to the screen, I want it to fit nicely. And again, we've resized it to 10. I'm gonna close this up. So now we're gonna use the grid set 0, 0 to 100. So that should be 0, 0, should set it to 100. There we go, set it to 100. Now we're gonna clear the whole grid, which again will clear that. Now we can use the grid accessor 0, 0. We'll get this value, which is 0. And we can also use dsgridget to get that same value. Again, still zero. I guess it would have been more helpful if I hadn't cleared it first, but oh well. Now we're going to set a region. So what we're doing here is we're saying from x1, so that's the column, to x2, that's the next column, and from y1, that's the row, to y2, that's the next row, we're going to set those values to be 101. So we're going to do this. And note, note that this isn't going to affect anything in this column, but if we go to 1, all of these values, and 2, all of these values, 
are set to 101. Those values are still set to zero as were all the other ones. Now we're gonna shuffle the grid. And you can see now some of these rows are set up differently. Finally, we're gonna resize the grid and we're gonna clear it. And now this grid is too big to view, but I'm going to unpause the debugger and come over here. And now we can start visualizing our grid. Again, remember that I set it up so that when I left click, we add to the grid. And I've just set it up so that the higher the value, the more red that grid is. So you can see that I'm adding to the grid in a disk. And if we come over here and look at what that code looks like, global left pressed, I'm just getting the mouse's position in grid space. I'm getting the mean of that disk, the average, and then I'm increasing that value and adding that back in. And you don't really have to know what all that does. It's really just to illustrate the purpose of how you can interact with the grid. If I right click, it shuffles everything. Right click. Note that the shuffle doesn't shuffle by rows. It shuffles the entire grid around, which may or may not be what you want. So in summary, grids are great for storing information in a grid or a table. They're essentially 2D arrays with more functionality. They're primarily used when you want to sort rows or shuffle data or have the ability to mess with regions or areas of the grid. And finally, the grid accessor is the hashtag or pound symbol, which you can use to both get and set specific cells in the grid. If you want to access regions, you have to use the built-in functions. As always, the links in this slide will be below, along with links to the source code and the slides themselves. And that's it. Thanks for watching.